going to look at verses 6 through 15. 1 Kings chapter 12, verses 6 through 15. The title of the message is, Are You Making Foolish Decisions? Are You Making Foolish Decisions? 1 Kings chapter 12, verses 6 through 15. First Kings chapter 12, verse 6. And King Rehoboam consulted with the old man that stood before Solomon his father while he yet lived and said, How do ye advise that I may answer these people? And they spake unto him, saying, If thou wilt be a servant unto this people this day and will serve them and answer them and speak good words to them, then they will be thy servants forever. But he forsook the counsel of the old man, which they had given him, and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him, and which stood before him. And he said unto them, What counsel give ye that we may answer these people, who have spoken to me, saying, Make the yoke which thy father did put upon us lighter? And the young men that were grown up with him spake unto him, saying, Thus shalt thou speak unto this people that spake unto thee, saying, Thy father made our yoke heavy, but make thou it lighter unto us. Thus shalt thou say unto them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's loins. And now, whereas my father did laid you with a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father has chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day as the king had appointed, saying, Come to me again the third day. And the king answered the people roughly and forsook the old men's counsel that they gave him and spake to them after the counsel of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, and I will add to your yoke. My father also chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. Wherefore the king hearkened not unto the people, for the cause was from the Lord, that he might perform his saying, which the Lord spake by Ahijah the Shilonite unto Jeroboam the son of Nebat. <coughs> Brother Richard, can you please pray for the message? Amen. Are you making foolish decisions? You and I make decisions all the time, you know, every day, you know, multiple decisions. Even right now, you're making decisions as you're listening to this preaching. It is something that you and I do as a human being. You know, we make decisions. And the decisions that we make determine our future. In this case, Rehoboam, he was given a choice. He was given a chance to make right decision. It was a very critical time in the history of Israelites because he made the wrong decision, not listening to the counsel of old men, but listening to people he grew up with. Covenant was broken. And because of that, it brought repercussions, consequences 
even 3,000 years later to the nation of Israel. Hebrews chapter 8 will talk about the new covenant when it brings back Judah and Israel together. But because of Rehoboam's decision, I mean, historically, you see what happened to Israelites. The country split, right? North and south. And even then, further and further and further on, nation of Israel had to go through many, many, many sufferings because of one person's decision. Your decision is simple as far as going to heaven or hell. You make the worst decision of your life for eternity if you reject Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says Jesus is God. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. God became a man and died for all your sins on the cross, shedding his precious blood. During this end of the year, you hear all the time. And as a person, you listen to it, and you got to make a decision. You could either believe the person who called himself to be the creator of the universe, who said he is God, or you could reject him. If you reject him, it's worse than Rehoboam's decision, because you'll be burning in hell for eternity. You could argue with me, but it doesn't matter. I just have human brain. You have human brain. Argue with the word of God. You're not going to win against the word of God. Word of God is alive. It's God's word. And word of God says, you have a choice. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. For life is a vapor that a prayer for a little time and then vanishes away. You'll be making the worst decision of your life. You'll be making the most foolish decision of your life if you reject Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today. Because you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Are you making that foolish decision right now if you have not trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And it is a question to so-called Christians out there. If you have not once in your life realizing that you are a sinner on your way to hell, believing that Jesus is God, with repenting heart, receive him in your heart, your Lord and Savior. Knowing all this, then you got to check your salvation. Because a lot of people grew up in church, and then they repeated after someone in a prayer. But just because you repeat after a prayer doesn't mean that you're saved. You have to do it from the bottom of your heart, knowing that you're a sinner on your way to hell, believing that what Jesus did for you and Receive him in your heart, your Lord and Savior. That's why before I get into the meat of the sermon, you have to make sure that you make the right decision of trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. No good works, church attendance, you know, charity, none of that. Baptism, you know, speaking in tongues, which devil's giving you, none of that will get you to heaven. It's only through Jesus Christ. And if you have made that right decision, one thing, you know, my brother or sister, you never have to worry about burning in hell. I mean, that's the best, best, you know, I think Christmas gift anybody could ever have yeah. or receive. Amen. That if you received it in the past, that's it, once and for all. But you get that assurance and you get this comfort that, you know what, that decision I made, Whatever the time you did receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, it's the best decision I ever made in my life. After what happens is a different story. What you do for the Lord, you know, after you get saved, it's up to you. And if you're living a miserable life because you're living in sin, that's on you. But at least you could always have that comfort. No matter what happens, because I made that right decision of trusting Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I don't have to worry about burning in hell. I could worry about everything else, yeah. right? You know, your health, your relationship, your finances, you know, everything in between. But you don't have to worry about burning in hell. And if you have not made that decision today of trusting Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have to make it today. You know, now is the day of salvation. 
Not tomorrow, not day after tomorrow, not on Christmas Day, right? No, right now. Yes. And, you know, my sincere prayer and hope is that if you're listening, you have made that decision or you're going to make that decision like today to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. And when we look at Rehoboam, he made a very foolish decision. And it determined the history of Israel. And as Christians, you make decisions every day. You make decisions today that will determine your own history. You make decisions every day that will make, you know, determine not only your history, but your family's history. Yes. That's the part that a lot of times people forget. You're not just you. You're body of Christ. When you trust that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you are in the same body now. The decision that you make will either hurt the body or help the body. The decision that you make will make people glorify God or they will bring bad name to God's name. It is up to you to understand that I make decisions every day. Am I making foolish decisions on a daily basis? Then what are some of the reasons why you make foolish decisions? Number one, you make foolish decisions because you have evil heart. Simple as that. If you have good heart, you're not going to make wrong decisions. You make wrong decisions because you have evil heart. A lot of times, this is associated with greed, covetousness, because your heart is not pure. You make decisions based on what you can get out of it. You make decisions based on your own greed. You do something for someone, not out of love that Christ has shown you, not out of because of love of Christ, because you want something back. I mean, how many human beings make everyday decisions, in Christians included, because you want something back in return? Right? I open the door for you, so next time I come, you open the door for me. And you don't open the door for me, I hate you. Right? You know, I bring food to you. Next time you bring food for me, you don't, man, I'm never going to bring food for you, right? I throw your trash away, right? You know, after you eat lunch, you know, people take the plates, right? And then next week, you're expecting it, you know, someone to do it for you because you did it last week and they don't do it for you. The same person that you sit in front of during the lunch table and you get offended. I mean, what was the point of doing those things? This evil heart comes from you trying to be number one in your life. Who had the same thought? Who? The devil himself. He wanted to be like God. So he made the foolish decision going against God. Why? Because he had evil heart. He started having that greed. He wanted to be God, right? And so what does he do? He made decision that will make him the best. Do you usually make your decision just to show off yourself? Do you make decision just to let other people know how good you are, how great you are, and not only yourself, but your family as well? If you make decision based on your own good, it's just not going to end well as a Christian. Because you're not there to make your decision for your own. You have to make decisions based on what Christ would want you to make decision upon. You have to make decisions based on the Word of God. That's why you become so selfish when you make, it, when you make your decisions. It's all about you. right? Uh, I could do something and help out the church. But you know what? Is that going to bring me glory or is that going to help me? 
as far as my comfort level? You go, no, so I'm not going to do it. Why do you make that kind of foolish decision? Because you're selfish. Because you have that evil heart. Every time you make the wrong decision, just remember, you're doing it out of your evil heart. Right? I mean, Christians are so foolish in that because you're saved, you know you're going to go to heaven, you come to church, open your Bible once on Sunday or Wednesday, and you leave it on your drawer, wherever you put it, the whole week goes by without you looking at the Word of God, and then you come, and then you see some brother doing anything wrong or sister, you get very, very judgmental, and you make the decision to make sure that, okay, that person's doing wrong and someone has to know about it. That's you. Instead of looking at your own self, when you make decisions, you're always looking at other people. You always make your decisions based off other folks. And when that happens, what happens? You gotta make the wrong decision. Oh, that person has a you know, nice car, right? So I'm gonna make decisions to get that car myself. Nothing wrong with working hard and everything. But what happens is that when that mindset comes in, you start compromising. You compromise. And you're like, okay. You know, Lord has given me a good job. I could work 40 hours a week, and then rest of them I could spend to, you know, serve God, spend time in Bible study, preaching, witnessing, you know, doing all that stuff. But like, you know what? I really need that car. You know, I have to have that car. Okay, over time, okay, let me work, you know, another day, hours, more hours, more hours. Then what happens? You start compromising your relationship with Lord Jesus Christ, and you're striving after that thing. Why? Because you're evil heart. Because you, yourself, do not have pure heart when you're making decisions. Let's turn our Bibles to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. So today, just think about every time when you make decision, why are you making that decision? Are you making foolish decisions over and over? you got to make decisions like Christ's mind because you are in Christ. And that's how it should be. But however, you have all nature, and that all nature is making you think that, you know what? You should be center of attention. Everything should be based on you. Philippians chapter 2, verse 1. Philippians chapter 2, verse 1. The Bible says, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Why, was, why did Rob one make such a bad decision? Why? Because he was only looking at things in his own things. That's it. But what does the Bible say? Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Do you really make decisions based on others? Right? I mean, others. We're, we're talking about anybody except you. Because Christ lived for others. I mean, Christ lived for you and I. I mean, do you live for others? I mean, that should be you. I mean, of course, you always try to be Christ-like, you know, as your own self, you want to grow and mature in, in the faith and in the Word of God. But as far as your heart is concerned, do you look at things of others? Like, for example, you know, you, you have brothers and sisters in Christ, right? If they could have better things than you, would you want them to have better things? Majority of you say no. I want to have better things as well, right? When you have better things first, then they could have better things. Isn't that you, right? You know, I have to have this house first, and then they could have that house. You know? If they have that house first, you know, I don't want to hear it. 
because you're so envious. But shouldn't you be happy for your brethren if good things happen to your brethren instead of being jealous, right? Again, if that person is looking down on you and stuff, you know, that's a different story, right? You know, that's a bad you know, character of that person. But when good things happen to your own brethren, you should be the most joyous person because that's part of your body. Think about it. If my hand was hurting and then it got healed and it's doing really good, I'm going to be happy, right? That's my part of body, doing good. If my back was hurting and it's doing good, man, I feel good. I'm happy. Are you going to be like, okay, your nose is going to start being jealous of your back being good? Is your right hand going to be angry at your left hand because it's healed? But that's what happens to Christians. Because you only think about yourself and you're so selfish, and you don't have the same mind, same love, like the Bible says in Philippians you know, 2, 2, you only think about your own self. And people say, you know, this is a time of giving, right? You know, this season of giving. But you as a Christian, you have to think about that phrase. I mean, am I a giving person? Do I give everything I can to others, especially my brothers and sisters in Christ? And it's not about you know, buying them a lunch, food, giving them stuff. It's about you dedicating part of your time and praying for them, really thinking about them. If you do that, then your decision-making will completely change. What was wrong with Rehoboam? When the old man gave him the counsel, he knew the right counsel. It's not like he didn't know the right counsel. He didn't know the right decision to make. He knew, but he said no. He went with his evil heart. He went with his power, you know, because... He had that grief for power. And then what happens? He made that wrong choice. Same thing with you. You and I make foolish decisions, not because we only know how to make foolish decisions. No, because we choose to make foolish decisions. You know the right thing to do. You know the right decision to make. If you need to be more compassionate and kind to your family members, but your stubbornness and your pride tells you, no, you cannot show your weakness to them, right? Whether it's man or woman, you know, you get into some arguments and you can never say, you know, I'm wrong, you know, it was my fault, can't be sorry about things. What happens? It just, fight gets bigger and bigger and bigger and you've made that wrong decision and you want to take it back. The thing is, after you make that wrong decision, you can't take it back. That's the hardest thing. Just how time continuously goes on, your wrong decision will continue to go on and it bears fruit. Do you think if Rehoboam knew what exactly was going to happen, truly, and thought about it, and saw that, you know what, you know, I'll be the person that really, really going to mess up the whole history of my country for thousands of years to come, instead of listening to his peers, maybe something might have changed. But that's how, you get, how weak the human hearts are. That's how wicked you are. You know the right thing to do, but you refuse it, you ignore it, and you still make the wrong choices and wrong decisions. Man, that's amazing. Because as a saved Christian, making those foolish decisions on a daily basis, on a regular basis, and that's shameful, yeah. right? I mean, you should be ashamed. I mean, I should be ashamed as well. How in the world, when you and I have received the greatest gift of salvation through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, 
And we know that we have to have a Christ mind, like minded, but instead we refuse the right thing and choose the wrong thing. Great. I mean, that's, that's, that's foolish. Yes. Can you imagine? So there's an apple, one hand, and there's, I don't know, rotten egg on the other hand. You know, you should choose the apple, right, to eat. Unless you like to eat rotten egg. How many anybody wants to eat rotten eggs, right? It's one of the worst smells out there. Yeah. That's why natural gas smells like rotten egg, you know, to wake you up. But you and I are constantly eating the rotten egg on a daily basis. Right. And you know it's bad for you. Yes. You know what's the worst thing as a human being? You know it's bad for you, but you still do it. If that's not foolish, I don't know what's foolish. Amen. If you have a certain condition and you're not supposed to eat nuts, right? You have allergy. But you're like, man, that cake looks so good. It has nuts in them. I have to do it. I only live once. You know, and you're not going to live long, right? You know, it's like that's your mindset, many of the Christians. You know, I only live once. You know? wow. But you don't think about the eternity. Because you never think about eternity when you make foolish decisions. Yeah. Rehoboam wasn't thinking about the repercussions for thousands of years to come. No, he was just thinking about at that time. Same thing with you. And then, oh, I eat it, and then you get allergy, and you blame God. God, why would you kill me so early? I mean, you're the one who made the wrong decision. Yeah. You were the foolish ones. That's why, as we look at Philippians chapter 2, 1 through 14, if you don't want to make foolish decisions, Think on other people's things. Think about others, especially, you know, when, if you think about their spiritual state, if you think about lost people out there, you're not going to make foolish decisions. You're going to think about your testimony, right? Because there's nothing under the sun that will be hid. Before you go off on your family, you're going to think about it. You know, i got to think about this. Yes. Before you go out there and you're, there's no brothers and sisters around you, and then you start doing those sins, you're going to think about it, yes. right? Before you go to places that you shouldn't be at because no brothers, no brothers or sisters around you. I mean, isn't it funny? When people want to do wicked stuff, people want to commit sin, they'll find ways to commit sin. Whether you're saved or unsaved. You're a Christian. If you have decided to do certain things, 99 out of 100 times, you're going to do it, especially when it comes to sin. And then you think that going, driving like 100 miles away will hide your sin from other folks. Maybe for a little bit, but it's going to be revealed eventually. That's how God works. God's going to make you pay for it. Yes. Like, for example, I mean, you're married. You should be faithful to each other. Amen. You're like, oh, man, you know, my spouse is making my life hard, miserable. Uh, everything he or she says is against what I believe and everything, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, but, you know, through Facebook or social media, you know, someone reached out to me, you know, from high school days, you know. You know now they're listening to me better than my wife or my husband. I'm like, right. okay. You know, like, yeah, but you have evil heart already. Right. You've already made the foolish decision in that you already started talking to the person. Yeah. I mean, if it we, we weren't for just gospel, hey, receive Christ or burn in hell, right? Then they will usually run away from you, yeah. right? You know, unless they will really want to get saved. But for these reasons, what's going to happen? You go, okay, let me tell my wife that I'm going to work. I have to go on a business trip, right? And don't fool me, it happens to every Christian. Yes. Christian families break up because men and women make foolish decisions. Amen. And then you try to kid, right? But he's eventually going to come out because you reap what you sow. Yes. And you're like, okay, I'm going to tell my wife, I'm going to tell my husband that I'm going on a business trip. 
and then you're like, you drive like 100 miles away, and then you meet that person. What do you think is going to happen? You guys going to talk long hours just to talk about you know, certain issues? No, it's going to leave one thing after another and another and another. Right. And then you know, you're going to commit that adultery. You're going to become a whoremonger. Yes. It all started from you making that foolish decision. Once you open it, you can't stop. You can't close it again. That's, right. that's you. Yes. And that's me. That's what sin will do to you. Amen. And once you make that foolish decision, because if you really thought about your husband and wife, would you even start those things? Yeah. Would you, I mean, if you really thought about your family, would you even start those things? Oh. That's why the Bible says, abstain from all appearance of evil. Right. Then, you know, I mean, it's kids too. Like, oh, you're supposed to study. You tell your parents, I'm going to go study at the library with Jimmy and Jennifer, right? But no, you're out there doing drugs, you know, drinking, gambling, you know, you know, being a whoremonger. And then you're like, and mom, you come home, oh, man, today study was so good. You know, I'm going to get A. You know, I'm going to do really well in those, you know, entrance exams, right? You're a liar. And then you think you're getting away with it and, you know, you're listening to the devil and the devil's like, man, you made the right decision. You really, really helped your flesh today. No. I mean, what you've done is what? You listen to your old flesh. You listen to the devil and the world and you've committed a great sin. Yes. You have to understand. When you make foolish decisions, you're making great sin. You're committing great sin against God. Not, not just, you know, your family members, your, you know, spouses and loved ones. You're committing great sin against Lord Jesus Christ. Have you ever thought about that? Like, when I make foolish decisions, I'm actually committing great sin against my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It should make you think twice. The reason you do it is what? Because you have that evil heart. That evil heart comes from what? You're not humble in the face of the Word of God. I mean, if you, if you don't live your life in the Word of God, you don't study, you don't meditate, how do you think you will not make a foolish decision? You will. Yeah. If there's no Word of God in your life, if you don't study the Word of God, memorize the Word of God, listen to the Word of God, I guarantee you you're going to make foolish decisions. Yeah, true. Simple as that. How am I supposed to, for example, you know, if I want to play golf, very technical sport. If no one shows me how to do it, I'm not going to play that well. I mean, even tennis, right? right? It gets frustrating playing tennis unless like, someone shows you technically how to do it because you're just going to hit the ball everywhere. And they teach you how to do it, you follow it, and you become a better golfer and tennis player. You want to be a better Christian? Amen. Get some instruction from the Word of God. Yes. You don't want to make foolish decisions? For example, if someone told me when I play tennis, you know, when you do your forehead, you know, you know, use your back leg or front leg, you know, use both of the arms or something, and then they go to follow this A, B, C. Uh, now I'll do it my way, right? But there are exceptionally gifted some people out there, but they're very rare. But normal people, and then you don't follow it. What happens? You're not going to play that well, yeah. and you're just going to get frustrated, right? Christian life, if you don't follow what the Word of God says, yeah. you are going to mess up. Yes. You're going to make foolish decisions. That's why we always say it. Before you make any decisions, what's your final authority? Is it you? Is it your wife, husband, your children, your grandma, grandpa? Or is it the Word of God? Word of God should always be the final authority when it comes to making decisions. Amen. That's why you go to the Word of God. Yes. I mean, that's why you pray. Yes. That's why when Word of God is your final authority, I guarantee you, you're going to make the right decision. I mean, how can you make wrong decisions when God said to do it and then you do it? Yes. You make wrong decisions because God said to do it, but you don't do it. So as we look at Philippians 2, 1 through 4, remember, 
as congregation, if you want to make the right decisions, we have to be like-minded and have the same love, Amen. love of Christ, right? You know, we don't talk too much about love too much because of Joel Austin's of the worlds that are out there, the right? Devil. You know, really, you know, have tainted the true meaning yeah. of Christ's love, right? You know, they always connect this love with prosperity, right? You know, okay. if God loves you, you got to be a millionaire, right? Nice. If I'm not a millionaire, does that mean that God doesn't love me? You know? I mean, that's, oh, yeah, if God loves you, you got to be, you know, healed from every ailment you have. No, it doesn't work like that. You want to have a same love being of one accord of one mind. And what comes with it? Look at verse 3. Let, let nothing be done to strive or vain glory. Amen. Then, you know, there, there shouldn't be too much strife, too much quarrels, fighting amongst brethren, right? right? You know, there's always going to be issues, right, as a human being. Yeah. But it's going to disappear. Why? Because you don't do it for vain glory. Right? Man, you don't do it just to show to people, this is who I am. We really have to get that out of our heart. Yes. Do things because you love the Lord. Amen. Don't do things because you want to show to someone. Right? If you're doing something for the Lord in the ministry, whether it's you know, teaching, cleaning, you know, audio, video, or any other capacity, you know, being hospitable to new members, you know, everybody. You do it because you have the same mind and same love. Not because you want to be that person, hey, you know, I'm that person, people come to me for all the answers. I'm that person, people come to me because, you know, I'm that great person. No. Get rid of it. You do it because you love the Lord. You do it because you love the brethren. Amen. Then verse 3, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than himself. When you make right decisions, like I said, you think about others, and you don't think you're better than the others. Oof. How many times have you made the wrong decisions because you thought you're better than someone else? As Christians, you should never think that you're better than someone else. Amen. You should never think that you're better than anybody. You're just a wretched sinner saved by grace. Woo! I mean, I'm no better than anybody, right? right. I mean, the only thing different between me and an unsaved person is that I'm saved by grace. Yes. I trust that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. That's it. I'm not looking down on you. Right. Anything, when we have conversation, I'm just telling you. only thing different is that you and I are same sinners yeah. on the way to hell. But I made decision to trust Christ as my Amen. Lord and Savior. That's why I'm going to heaven. But in no way, you know, I look down on you because of your heritage, you know, your material possessions or your character or anything. Right. But as Christians... You should never look down on any brothers and sisters in Christ Amen. because of their looks, because of their possessions, because of their characters or whatnot, right? You pray for them. Obviously, they're being a you know, hindrance to church. I mean, you let me know, right? We deal with it according to the word of God. But however, many times you esteem others not, I mean, you don't esteem others better than yourself. It's because you're just jealous. You have greed. You have covetousness. You have evil heart. That's why when you could help someone inside the church because you don't like him, because you think you're better than them, you don't help them. I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty bad. Yes. I mean, in a Bible-believing church, but that's been going on. Because you think you're better than that person. Just because you're money doesn't mean you're better than that person. Just because you're healthier than that person, you're not better than that person. Just because, you know, you've been saved longer than that person doesn't mean that you're better than that person. You are same sinner saved by grace. That's why you have to have that humble heart, lowliness of mind. You know what? I'm no better than that sister. I'm no better than that brother. Right. But thank God they're part of body in Christ with same love, you know, with same mind. And I'm going to serve them. What was Rehoboam told to do? Serve his people. 
That's the duty of a king. Serve his people. He knew it, but he didn't want to do it because he was power hungry. He got bad counsel. You know what to do. What's the right thing to do? Serve others. Yes. Serve my brothers and sisters in Christ. But majority of you want to be served instead. Get rid of that mind. You're like, how do I do it? First, change your heart, then you'll know. I mean, it's, it's funny when your heart's not even ready to clean, and you're like, mommy, what do I need to clean? You go back to your phone, right? Just to p please your mom, right? Before she gets angry at you, right? And you're like, before you want to really serve others, have a lowliness of heart and make sure that you're not better than anybody. Just think of it as like this. You know, I'm actually worse than everybody. So, I mean, that will solve your problem, right? Yeah. I mean, don't even be like, you know, yeah, we're equal level, right? No, no, no. no. Just say, I'm, I'm worse than you. I'm, I'm, I'm no better than anybody, right? Yes. As I look at my life, how much I disappoint my Lord and Savior on a daily basis, yeah. you know, making foolish decisions and committing sin, man, I'm, I'm really bad. Amen. You give up. Then you have hope. Then you're like, oh, man, I haven't really thought about that brother or sister. Because, you know, I never really thought about them. Because I always thought I was better than them, right? But when you realize that everyone needs to be served, and you should serve others, and you got to esteem others better than yourself, then you're like, man, okay, I want to pray for them. You know, that comes from your heart. How many of you actually pray for everybody in this room on a daily basis? And don't tell me you don't have time to do it. You have time to look at your phone you know, all the time. Yeah. So you have time to pray for the brethren. How many of you guys actually pray for each other? Really think about each other. I could tell you, honestly, there are very few. Very, very few. Yes. But don't be that majority who doesn't do it. Who doesn't, you know, care about other brothers and sisters in Christ? That's just having an evil heart. You have to be Christ-like, and you have to have mind of Christ. And always ask yourself, am I serving the Lord with lowliness of mind each day? When you serve the Lord with lowliness of mind each day, this Philippians 2, 1 through 4 will just come out of your heart and action naturally. You don't even have to force it. That's what God wants. He doesn't want to force you. God never forces anyone to accept Christ. Right. God never forces you to serve him. Yeah. We have free will. Amen. You serve him from your heart. And realizing all of this, man, am I like Rehoboam? I know right thing to do. I know my decisions have consequences. And it could really ruin my future and my family's future and my church members' future and my everybody's future. But I'm still going to do it, make that foolish decision? Or am I going to be that person who realizes my wrongdoings, who realizes I'm better than nothing, who realizes everybody's better than me, who realizes that I'm just a saved sinner saved by grace? I'm just a sinner saved by grace. I'm never going to put myself above anybody. I'm definitely not going to put myself above Christ. And word of God is my final authority. Amen. Are you going to be that person where you put the word of God first, humble, be humble, and get rid of that evil heart and goodness of heart, Christ-like mind, one mind, same love, and serve the Lord? Yes. Then you're going to make right decisions. Amen. You're going to make godly decisions. So that's number one, one of the first reasons, right? You make, you make foolish decisions because you're evil heart, because you're covetous, you're power hungry, you're envious. And secondly, why do you make foolish decisions? Because you are with the wrong crowd. Wrong crowd. Yeah. You're with people that you shouldn't be with, right. right? And especially, you know, fellowship is so important. You could be here Sundays, right? But the rest of the day, you're hanging out with, you know, folks. Say, 
You hang out with people who do drugs all the time, right? And you suddenly start doing drugs. Yeah. Don't blame God for it. God, you know, why did you let that happen? Yeah. No, because you put yourself in, at the wrong place. Let's turn our Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. So think about who you're hanging out with. Think about your circle, your inner circle of friends, right? 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Obviously, your best friend shouldn't be unsafe people right off the bat, right? Maybe you have different spirit. And again, I'm not saying that you should neglect and you know, ignore all those unsafe people. No, right? You have love for their souls. Try to witness to them. You know, lead him to Christ. But it shouldn't be your focus of your fellowship. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. I mean, that's not what I said. That's what the Bible says. Amen. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? If, if your fellowship people are all about drinking, that's not the right people to be with. Right? If they love to do gamble, they say, let's go to Las Vegas every you know, weekend. No, That's you. not the right crowd to be with. You're not that strong to resist those temptations. I mean, you can't kid anybody. Right. Continuing, and what communion has light with darkness? Right. Uh, Answer is very simple, right? Real born, one of the pitfalls was that he had wrong friends. He had wrong friends. Gave him the wrong advice and wrong counsel. I mean, if you have wrong friends, they're going to give you wrong counsel. Amen. Right? Yeah. I mean, common thing is, hey, man, that church is too strict. You know? I want to come with a bikini, right, on Sundays. You know, I want to show all of my skins, right? And then, man, I mean, you... <laughs> You think that's going to glorify God, right? You know what? That church is too strict, and I should be smoking. I should be able to smoke. You know, I should be able to do drugs, you know? you know? I mean, they don't know that their body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, yeah. right? Like, you know what? You know, just having a fun time going to somewhere, drinking, it's not bad. I mean, those are the crowds that you're going to hang out with, then what's going to happen? It's going to pollute you. Yes. And you're going to make foolish decision after foolish decision. Verse 15, and what conquer has Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. Do you realize that? Your body is a temple of the living God. So every foolish decision you make, you, you are defiling the temple of right. God. Yes. Think about it. And it's not just actions, people. It's your thoughts Amen. that defiling you the most. Yes. Because what's inside of you comes out of you. Right. Right. Real Worm knew the right thing to do, but he ignored it. He rejected it. Yes. And he chose the wrong advice from the wrong fellowship. And what was the consequence? Kingdom split. Right. Israel had to go through and still going through so much hardships because of his decision. That's why you have to understand, you know what? I got to stop making foolish decisions. Yes. I got to stop this wrong fellowship that I'm having with, right? And when it comes to spiritual sense, what, what kind of wrong fellowship can you have? Following the false teachers, right? Amen. Following the wrong doctrine. Right. Yes. I mean, that will pollute you, Amen. right? That's right. I mean, people wouldn't believe that Jesus is God, and then you hang out with them, you know, and suddenly you're like, oh, is Jesus really God? Man, you become cuckoo, yeah. right? Or someone says, oh, speaking in tongues is from the God. I'm from God and everything good. No, but the word of God is a sign. It's for Jews, right? It's for unbelievers. 
but you start listening to things. You're like, oh, you got to be baptized to go to heaven, you know? No. I mean, and like Romans 6, and like you're changing it to water. I mean, there's no water in it. And then you start having fellowship with those folks. What's going to happen? It's going to brainwash you. That's right. You, if you grew up in a communist country, you think you'd be no different from those folks? They've been brainwashed over and over and over because they had the wrong fellowship. I mean, they were born into it, many of them, but we have some cuckoos who go to those countries, give up U.S. citizenship, and become part of the Communist Party, and they're like, okay, this is the best. But what happened? Because of the wrong fellowship. So you better check your fellowship. Parents, check your children's fellowship. You got to understand and you got to know who their friends are. It's not invasion of privacy. You, they live under you. That's right. I mean, if they're under 18, you still have your parental guidance, right? right. Yeah. For life. That's right. I mean, that's how it should be, Amen. right? They're your children when you're 80 and they're 60 still, right? right. Or 90 and 70, right? Yeah. 175. They're still your <laughs> child. You have to make sure that they're in the right fellowship yes. with right people and kids. Young people, if you're in the wrong fellowship, if they talk about or they do drugs, drinking, you know, sleeping with anybody and gambling and all that stuff, you have to cut that off. Yes. Or else you're going to continuously make foolish decisions. And again, when it comes to spiritual stuff, you've got to cut it off with people who's against the right doctrine, who's against the right leadership in the church, right? If, you know... If the men of God, pastors and pastor wives are following the word of God and, you know, God's giving blessing them, showing fruits of it, yes. then you just continue to follow, right? Amen. But if you start having fellowship with those people, you know, gossipers, you know, complainers, murmurers, then what's going to happen? You're going to be that crowd that tries to divide the church and God punishes you and you're out of here. You want to listen to their advices? Rehoboam was listening to his peers, and he listened to those counsel and advices. What happened? Made the worst decision of his life. That's, you could make that worst decision every day of your life if you have that bad fellowship. Then you have to cut it off. Yeah. Simple as that. There's no if and buts, you know. You cut that wicked evil fellowship off, then what's going to happen? You're going to stop making foolish decisions. So in conclusion, think about it. You and I make decisions every day. You and I make decisions every hour, every minute, every second. You have to have the heart. You have to change your mindset. I'm going to make decisions based on the Word of God. Amen. Just Final authority. I don't care what everybody says. I'm going to do it according to the word of God and with lowliness of heart, realizing that I'm just a sinner. I'm not better than anybody. I thank God for his grace and mercy. Then you could truly understand what it is to make wrong decisions, foolish decisions, and what it is to make right decisions for the glory of Jesus Christ. Let's pray.